Welcome everyone, I'm Monica. And I'm Nikki. And today we're gonna discuss executive presence, why it matters and how to develop it. Now, executive presence is one of those things that sometimes is really hard to kind of pinpoint. It's it's just this untangible thing that you've got to just work on. So, And you know it more when someone doesn't have exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what is executive presence? How do you break it down and define it? So executive presence is really what you signal to other people about your preparedness. Yes. And uh, in terms of breaking it down, I think the best definition mm -hmm. is the one by leading expert Sylvia Ann Hewlett, who does a phenomenal job. Yes. The studies that she's been doing for years about executive presence and has really uh, gotten it down to the details of what drives it and how to um, develop it and has been studying talent across industries and companies around yes. the world. So she breaks it down into three things. Gravitas, communication, and appearance. Yes. So gravitas, um, you know, let's talk about each one of these things, yes. right? I mean, it's it's the things that we hear about, yeah. but we don't often know. And, how and to... I would think gravitas is the most elusive one that people right. are like, what does gravitas mean when someone says you need to have more gravitas? And it's like, okay, what is that? Like, yeah. I can't grab it and touch it. So what does it mean? Yeah, so gravitas is actually the biggest component of executive presence. It's sixty-seven percent of executive presence is all about gravitas, and like mm -hmm. you said, it's it's the elusive one that sometimes is hard to define, but is easy to spot. Actually, when you see someone that has gravitas, you know it exactly, um, and it's often defined as you know having depth and substance. Mm -hmm. You know, having that unique leadership quality mm -hmm. where you command respect, mm -hmm. you have that presence when you walk yes. into a room, but fundamentally it comes from knowing your stuff. Right, <laughs> it's the confidence of knowing your yeah. stuff, like yeah. knowing it cold, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it's also show, you know, you're someone who shows grace under fire. Mm -hmm. You're very composed no matter what the circumstances. You're the person who's creating certainty. Yes. And uh, inspiring confidence in other people. You're not the one who's getting mm -hmm. frazzled easily. Um, and often gravitas is also associated with going slower, you mm -hmm. know, speaking slower, using silence to your advantage. Right. Um, but that is a lot of what make someone feel like they have gravitas. Right, and you grow into it as you develop your confidence or your expertise in a certain area, or you know and you're fully prepared for this meeting that yeah. you're going into. There's just that level of confidence that you walk in with um, knowing that you're prepared and it naturally kind of comes out as gravitas. Yeah, well, you're the one that people are looking to right. because right. you have that command yeah. of that room and the command um, can be because of the knowledge and the expertise, right. but can also be how you're presenting that information right. and how others perceive you. That self that self assuredness. Yeah, absolutely. Next up is communication. Mm -hmm. So communication isn't just about what you're saying; it's how you say it, but yes. also how you listen mm -hmm. and how you show up when you're speaking. So whether it's your posture, body language, gestures or it's um, you know being an active listener yes. when you're communicating. Yes. And then obviously your choice of words, mm -hmm. uh, whether you have filler words or you're someone who has uh, an upward intonation. Yes. Usually when you Sometimes. have that upward intonation and often, and it takes away from executive presence. So yeah, it's the tone, the cadence, all of that. I mean, the interesting thing about communication, like they always say, is that communication really honestly is almost 90% of the way you deliver it and 10% of the words you actually say. Yes. So communication really is all of that, you know, um, diction and intonation and just the confidence in the way that you're speaking. But most importantly, like you said, the active listening is listen and answer the actual question or make the point ra rather than rambling on. So it's really being really straightforward in your communication. Yeah. So I think, you know, I remember um, when I, I worked at, at an organization, one of the leaders said something I will never forget when he talked about communication. He said, be brief, be brilliant and be gone. <laughs> so when you communicate, just think about being brief and just making your point and then Letting wrapping it up, up. <laughs> wrapping it up. So yeah. those are the things you need to remember with communication. Yeah. 
Okay, so the third piece of executive presence is appearance. And that's actually the least important uh, one in terms of the overall um, mix. So it's only about 5% mm -hmm. of the total. Right. However, it's the one that actually influences how people view your gravitas and will uh, consider your communication. So right. appearance refers simply to your you know, uh, look, your attire, your dress style, you know, you polish, all mm -hmm. of that. But if you show up a certain way, you're more likely to be perceived um, and viewed as having gravitas and communication. So it's really interesting that it's a small percentage, but it has it's an influential percentage. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, some of that is is because you can exude gravitas and you can also be very commanding in the way that you communicate over the phone or sometimes when somebody doesn't see you. But and so that's where they say sometimes the appearance doesn't really matter. But if somebody does see you and you're disheveled and all yeah. of that, then you have to fight through those filters to get that gravitas and the communication out and across. Yeah. So always just make sure that even though it's a small amount, it can actually impact you quite a bit. Absolutely. Well, so what's interesting in all of this, when you think about executive presence and communication or gravitas, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you think about appearance, is that often there's this belief mm -hmm. that great leaders are all charismatic, or that you are born with charisma, yes. and either you have it or you don't. And if you don't have it, you kind of screwed. Um, but you know, what um, Dr. Hewlett's study has proven is that it's actually charisma is not the important factor right. and is not necessarily the driving factor, that these are all skills that you can develop. It can be learned. It Absolutely. can be learned. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, yes. how did you develop? How did I presence? develop it? Yes. So, I mean, you know, coming from, um, you know, a family that I was first generation corporate. And so I didn't have a lot of role models or exposure of how you were supposed to um, exhibit executive presence in a corporate culture. And so when I got there, I learned really quickly that there was some sort of like aura about some of these leaders and people that I was around. And so certainly I was dressed for success, but there was something that I realized that, okay, I am I need to make sure that I'm communicating and carrying myself with mm -hmm. a level of gravitas. And so for me, I identified some people that, you know, just were really impressive. And I just really admired the way that they carried themselves and I admired their gravitas. And so I would study them in conference rooms when we were in meetings and the way they would talk to people and the way they would make eye contact and nod and kind of, you know, gain people's kind of attention and mm -hmm. command. And so I started, you know, paying attention to that, like the whole body language, like even their hand gestures and how, you know, they were using the kind of the, the, the hand, the steeple, you know, when they were sitting there listening. And so it's, it's almost kind of one of those things where it's a performance. Mm -hmm. And so I remember also looking up um, experts like Carol Kinsey Goman, who's a body language expert who talked about, you know, how you take up space in a room. Like when you at, when you're at a conference table, don't slouch or sit back mm -hmm. in the seat, like lean up and like, you know, and almost lean in. Right. Yeah. So it really was kind of identifying people who exhibited that gravitas that I wanted to emulate. And so really finding those individuals mm -hmm. and, and studying them, really yeah. just studying how their mannerisms and the way they were handling themselves. And then, of course, absolutely doing my homework, knowing my content cold, being confident mm -hmm. when somebody asked me a question. And I did learn really quickly that I had to really be an active listener and make sure that I was answering the question that individuals were asking me because otherwise I can talk a lot. <laughs> so, so it's, it was something that I had to learn as well in terms of communication. After I got the whole body language thing down, I really had to focus on communication. Mm, that's great. Yeah. How about yourself? Well, uh, for me, you know, coming as an immigrant, um, I think that initial experience mm -hmm. was truly a, a shock, right? right? Because you come from a different culture where mannerisms are different, mm -hmm. speech is different, accents are different, yes. how you carry yourself is different. Even the simple idea of making eye contact and, you know, your mm, head yes. straight and looking up at someone versus in certain cultures where you might not be doing that. So there was a lot of adjustment in that. Um, and I have to say, this is where business school really helped because mm -hmm. so much of that required presentation in front of people. And so mm -hmm. being able to 
not only being forced to do that, but also emulating again, seeing mm -hmm. other people that did that. Uh, but another piece that really helped was I, I remember watching a lot of interviews on TV hmm, of that's, business yeah. leaders being interviewed and specifically more than what they would talk about, I would observe their style, mm -hmm. observe their speech patterns or mm -hmm. uh, their composure, their grace, uh, even uh, on CNBC, for example, you know, the stock market's tanking and you're interviewing the right. CEO of a major company uh -huh. and they're really calm and they're mm -hmm. composed and they know their stuff cold. Right. Um, they command attention. So mm -hmm. watching television and observing people that were being interviewed was a big part of what helped uh, mm -hmm. me learn. And um, I, I found that this is absolutely something that can be developed by being more deliberate. And frankly, slowing down mm. is hugely helpful. Yes. When you are um, less frenzied in your thinking mm -hmm. and your speaking. Right and you're more deliberate and thoughtful, it can go a long way in terms of giving that impression of gravitas and uh, being able to you know, present the executive presence. Yeah, that's fascinating. And you know, when you, we talk about this, like you were saying, the eye contact and slowing down and taking up space. Now in this world of digital age and Zoom meetings and things like that, you have to even be more deliberate in oh, those absolutely. cases, right? Yeah. Because you can't take that seat at the front of the table right next to you know the, the leader, the senior leader, um, and you can't take up the space. And sometimes maybe hand gestures are a little harder to do because you've <laughs> got to be in front of the camera. So now it's kind of like making sure you're front and center in front of the camera, making sure that you're making eye contact mm -hmm. well with the camera, right? So that, mm -hmm. so those are all the things too that have, you know, you have to think about where are you, how are you communicating and what medium and things like that. So it's super interesting how it all changes. Cause you mentioned you watched a lot of people doing interviews and um, that's- And if you think about it, what we're doing today in a lot of meetings mm -hmm. is meeting over Zoom. So in a way, think of yourself as being on, on television. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's the same thing. It's that portion in a mm -hmm. box that is showing and it has to communicate that executive presence has to right. demonstrate the gravitas and how you communicate within a small window of time where right. people might be distracted and also your appearance in that place. So I think all the same things matter. But um, where in a real life situation, you know, your body language and your entire posture matters, mm -hmm. but here it might just be your shoulders, right? Or, your <laughs> or the head tilt, right? Because there, some people do have the habit when they're listening, they'll turn their head to the side or something and yeah. it's distracting. So you've got to make sure that maybe you're just nodding and you're doing a lot more of the kind of um, just visual kind of like, okay, I hear you and things like that. Um, but being very careful that you aren't doing the head tilt or you're not slouching back yeah. or, um, you know, just getting, making yourself really small in the camera because <laughs> you kind of lean back a little bit. So just being, being actual, just deliberate about that. Yeah. Well, the other piece is also um, in terms of, you know, the uh, choice of words. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly apologizing, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, you're you minimize yourself sometimes. So, like, well, I just think, or just, you know, just, just the words word like just, or <laughs> yeah, absolutely pointless. Or you apologize <laughs> before you start, or you're like, I don't know, I think maybe, and you're just kind of almost derailing your answer instead of speaking with confidence and things yeah. like that. So, being very deliberate about the choice of words and being confident in the way that you deliver it. Um, and if you don't know, just being very confident saying, you know what, that's a great question. I don't mm -hmm. know, let me get back to you on that. I um, mean, being very kind of confident in that you'll get the answer to them. You just don't wanna misinform them in that moment. Yeah, or saying, you know, I guess. Yeah, I guess is another really bad one. So just paying attention to those words to yeah. avoid um, because then you can start getting kind of nervous and fidgeting yeah. and things like that as well. I think a simple way to sort of package it all is ultimately your ability to signal preparedness to someone through your executive presence really comes down to creating a, a sense of certainty in the other person. Yes. You know, um, inspiring confidence in the other person by how you show up. So that could be the fact that you're creating certainty because you know your stuff mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. you're calm and composed so they know you can lead uh, or that you are truly someone that uh, is very much in command 
Mm -hmm. And your communication reflects that certainty. There's no doubt. There's no filler words. There's no just or maybe or I guess or I'm sorry um, to make up for the lack of certainty. And then Mm -hmm. and finally, your appearance signifies that level of dignity and presence as well. So I think just being able to have all of those pieces in place when you simply think of how do you inspire certainty in other people Mm -hmm. by how you show up. Right. And so it's something like we said, they're all learned and you grow into this executive presence. And so it's not this elusive thing that you're not going to be able to master, but it is something that's going to take work and effort. There you have it. All right. See you next time.